We've been engaged in a global conversation about race and racism. Hello, lovelies. I probably wouldn't bother to comment on this if I hadn't been asked, having waxed lyrical on the problems with the idea of white privilege in the past. But I was asked, so I'm going to. And I think it's important to establish a couple of things here quite quickly. I am very, 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 very left-wing. But I'm more of an old-school leftist. I'm a left anarchist. I think identity politics is a problem. I think it uh, distracts and divides and pulls us away from the things that unite and bring us together. Also, I want to invoke here some of your own ideological underpinnings, even though I don't believe in them and I think they're wrong and destructive. You like to privilege the subjective personal experiences, the lived experiences, the, the viewpoints of people according to characteristics like race, class and so on, and to exclude other people from commenting if they don't have the right combination of race, class, etc. So as a middle-aged cishet white male, I find that my opinion is uh, unsought much of the time, despite the fact that I represent the kind of person, yeah, even as a radical left-wing sort of person, that they're trying to convince. So I'm going to invoke your own ideas here, and I'm going to tell you that my subjective personal experience, my lived experience here, privileges my opinion when I tell you how concepts like white privilege land where the problems are with them, why they're not convincing, those kinds of issues. So by your own ideological underpinnings, you need to privilege my opinion on how these things land, what they mean, how they affect the discourse, whether they're persuasive. You've probably had discussions at home, at school or at work, and in those conversations, you've probably heard the term white privilege. You may have even had this term used in a way that felt like an insult or an accusation. Others will have told you that it's all just made up to make white people feel bad and none of this is right. It may not be right, but it is how the term is used. It is used as an insult and an accusation and a way of getting people to shut up. And it's all very well going forward trying to lecture people on what the term means but if it is used in an entirely different way, if it, was, if it is understood, if it is received in an entirely different way, it's not going to do you a lot of good here. Now, similarly, I'm coming at it at, from a linguistic point of view, from a semantic point of view, in that privilege has a very specific meaning and one that activists are already trying to redefine and do away with anyway, which again only muddies the waters. We can't clearly communicate if we don't agree on the meaning of words and otherwise ironing board bookend, hat stand tree flower elephant. It, it, communication just becomes completely impossible if we can't agree on the meaning of terms. And this pseudo-academic redefinition of privilege is not the commonly understood meaning of privilege. And using different language would be a lot more effective, particularly here in the UK, where we do tend to be much more focused on class. Privilege invokes the idea of royalty, of people with particular legal immunities, diplomatic immunity, for example. And that is a more correct, more proper, more entrenched meaning of the word than the way in which people are using it in activism. Properly, privilege means a de jure advantage um, in law. So yeah, royalty has certain privileges. Members of government have certain privileges. Diplomats have certain privileges. The police have certain privileges. But unless you're making your video or people are making their comments from a time machine in apartheid South Africa or the segregation era America, you can't really point at anything in law that privileges white people. And confusingly and paradoxically, you can look at things in law that privilege people of particular non-white ethnic backgrounds. 
preferential hiring and so on. And this just provides fodder for the far right. And that's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Privilege is a hard concept for people to understand because normally when we talk of privilege, we imagine immediate unearned riches and tangible benefits for anyone who has it. And that's not hard to understand at all because that is the meaning of privilege. A privilege is, according to the OED, a special right, advantage or immunity granted or available only to a particular person or group. So things like the police, who have the right to break the law in pursuit of enforcing the law, or diplomats who cannot be arrested for breaking the law. Money becomes a bit of a, a, a fuzzy issue because money gives you access to things that you might otherwise not have access to. But strictly speaking, being rich is not a privilege. We use it in a more colloquial way there. But privilege itself is not hard to understand, and people are intuitively understanding it in exactly the way that you describe. The problem comes in where you use it as pseudo-intellectual jargon to try and describe something that is not privilege as it is commonly understood. And you get a hell of a lot further if you use different language. But white privilege, and indeed all privilege, is actually more about the absence of inconvenience, the absence of an impediment or challenge. And as such, when you have it, you really don't notice it. But when it's absent, it affects everything you do. Except no, that's not what it means at all. It's not the absence of an impediment. It's something that you have, something that is over and above the norm, not the norm. So as a cishet white male, you would say that I am the assumed default in society and that everything that I have, every right rather than, than privilege, you know, that's the societal norm. So anything above my status would be privilege, and anything below my status would be underprivileged or disadvantaged. Right? And that is a much better way to put it, because then you're not accusing me, who doesn't have any special rights or advantages sworn in in law, you're not accusing me of having something that I don't. You're saying, if you rephrase it, if you turn it around, you're saying, I am not being treated fairly to the extent society is supposed to treat me. And that becomes a much better argument that appeals to people's empathy and sympathy. It's saying, I just want to be equal, and that comes across so much better. But when you try to redefine a term, when you try to redefine language, when you try to use language in this pseudo-intellectual newspeak way by redefining terms, it really shouldn't be any surprise that nobody understands what the fuck you're on about. There are lots of types of privilege out there. The privilege of being born into a wealthy family versus a poor family is kind of obvious. But then there's the privilege of being able-bodied versus having or acquiring a disability that most of us take for granted. Not to get lost in the weeds here, but money is a really tricky one because technically you don't have any special rights given to you because you're rich. You might be better able because you're wealthy to access certain things in society, private education, better legal representation, things like that. But you're not given anything just for being rich. You have to spend the money that you have. It's, it's tricky. It doesn't quite fit all of this. But being able-bodied isn't a privilege. Someone who is disabled, I mean, the, the clue is there. Right? even though we tried to change the language in the 90s to things like differently abled and so on. It's the same problem. It doesn't create a sense of empathy or sympathy or compassion when you turn it the other way around. In fact, you have privileges for being disabled. The law protects you in a way that it doesn't protect able-bodied people. So strictly speaking, being disabled gives you certain privileges. It doesn't make you underprivileged. I have two very close friends who are wheelchair users, and I'll be honest, when I first met them, I was completely ignorant about the everyday ways their lives are made harder through no fault of their own. Some of these ways are simply thoughtless, but some of them are just the way we live, just the way we build infrastructure, just the way 
everything works that just makes their life harder than mine. That's just one of the ways that I'm privileged. And understanding that, embracing that, doesn't make me a bad person. No, it's the accusatory way in which this is used. It is the, the racist or other bigoted attitudes that are implicit in accusations of privilege that make you a bad person or anyone else who wields this like a club a bad person and lots of people do you may not mean it that way but plenty of people do people are being discounted cut out their attitudes and opinions their hardships all ignored because of this assumed white privilege and it is incredibly dangerous this idea that white people as a collective group somehow have an easy life or an easier life right the disabled person right i am not privileged they are underprivileged or disadvantaged would be a bit better way to put it and so we create privileges to assist those people like mandating ramps for buildings or giving them protected status under the law so that crimes against the disabled person are now a hate crime and so on right we create privileges for them that i don't have access to if i get murdered it's not a hate crime for example right even if it's explicitly because i'm cisgender or heterosexual or even male that's not a position of privilege but ignoring it raises the chance that my friends will be excluded in ways that are not obvious to me. And as their friend, I can't allow that. There's a good chance as a white person watching this, your life is already hard. Every day you have to overcome some difficulty or challenge just to get by, but you can still have white privilege. White privilege doesn't mean you haven't worked hard or you don't deserve the success you've had. It doesn't mean that your life isn't hard or that you've never suffered. It simply means that your skin color has not been the cause of your hardship or suffering. There's two problems here. First, in that this term is used in exactly the way that he says it isn't meant, right? It is used to say you had an easy life just because you're white. You had more opportunities just because you're white and so on, which simply isn't true. And again, it's not privilege unless it's something more impactful than just some kind of slight difference in social interaction. And it is still better to describe, rather than accusing someone of being privileged, it's still better to describe someone else as underprivileged or unequal. Again, because that engages the, the sympathy and the empathy and the compassion in a way that this doesn't. An accusation of privilege immediately gets someone's back up. And then there's also the fact that people who are white can and do suffer because of the colour of their skin. Not necessarily to the same extent, not necessarily in the same country, but it does happen. People get passed over for promotion because the law requires a diversity hire. That's a privilege. You might get passed over for a scholarship because more scholarships are available or they want to only make them more available to women or minorities or whoever else. That's a genuine case of a privilege, and it's not one that white people tend to tend to receive. If you live in a predominantly ethnic minority area when you're white, people can be extremely hostile to you. Even just passing through such an area, people can be incredibly hostile to you. And most of us, I think, absorb the idea that dividing people up, setting them against each other, on the basis of race is bad and yet now we have activists who claim to be anti-racist activists utterly fixated on race no wonder that shocks and upsets a lot of people there is nothing but a benefit to understanding our own privileges white and otherwise it brings us closer to those who are different it helps us be vigilant about the ways we treat others different than us it helps us make a society that is fairer and more equal Having white privilege doesn't make your life easy, but understanding it can help you realize why some people's lives are harder than they should be. This is one of those things that is a semantic issue and is a communications issue. You can communicate exactly the same concept by describing your minority group as being underprivileged or disadvantaged or unequal, and it won't 
elicit the same response of hostility and rejection because you're not accusing people of having something that in reality they don't have. They don't have advantage. They don't have privilege. They exist at the baseline. You may be below that for one reason or another, but unless it's in law, it's not a matter of privilege. It's a matter of social interactions. And we had gotten to a point in, say, the 90s, where everyone was pretty much on the same page. Race didn't matter. Gender didn't matter. Sexuality didn't matter. You mattered as an individual, not part of a collective. And assumptions, by and large, weren't made, except by bigots, about a collective of people just because they happen to share the same colour, the same sexuality, whatever. You know, we had, to a large extent, societally gotten past that. There were a few echoes here in the UK with the right-wing governments that we had, Section 28 and so on, but by and large we've gotten past it. And yet now it is the people who are supposedly activists against racism who are raising the spectre of racism. And at risk of God winning myself, I want to point out that this is an incredibly dangerous place to be in, accusing people of being the, the secret masters of the world, of having unearned privilege, of being rich and powerful and structuring society to their advantage is incredibly dangerous. Now, I've made the point many times before on this channel, but I will make it again and try and ram it home. Nazi anti-Semitism, and here's the risk of the God winning, wasn't based on the idea that Jews were inferior, but rather that they were superior, that they had unearned wealth, unearned privilege, that they were controlling society, that they were secretly in charge. And this is really at root no different to accusations of white privilege and so on. Were all six million plus Jews killed in the Holocaust rich? powerful in positions of control? No, they weren't. And it's unfortunate to me to see identity politics infecting the left wing of UK politics and elsewhere so much as a result of these same kinds of stereotypes where they should be against unearned privilege, against obscene levels of wealth and the distorting effect that has on our democracies. Uh, and, and, you know, you should protest what goes on in Israel as well. It's, it's not a good scene for most people. But to let that bleed over into anti-Semitism, yeah, that's horrendous. And this anti-white racism, which mirrors old Nazi propaganda about unearned privilege, unearned wealth and control of society, that should also be a cause for deep concern amongst all of us. We need to be intolerant of racism wherever it comes from. And this idea of white privilege is a deeply racist concept. If nothing else, tactically, it doesn't work. It makes people defensive, it makes them angry, it gets their back up. And we shouldn't have to mentally translate from what you're saying each and every time and most people aren't going to know that privilege doesn't actually mean privilege in this instance or that systemic racism isn't actually racist nobody involved has to be racist yeah it's we shouldn't have to translate all of these terms from this jargon that you've developed you need to reach out to people and make yourself understood by using simpler commonly understood language I mean, that's your job as an activist. White privilege doesn't exist unless you have access to a time machine. Are you disadvantaged? Now, that's a conversation we can have, and one in which the vast and overwhelming majority of people believe everyone should be treated equally and fairly. And that will get you some progress. Zang.